Welcome to Leadership Training 101. In this video, we're gonna give you the big picture of leadership teams. This will get every team on the same page using the same terms and working together for the same purpose. Okay, so let's start with this. The basic organization of teams. Now, obviously, teams start with people. And these people are organized into teams. So you might have, you know, a worship team, a youth team, a welcome team, whatever. And in a lot of cases, we'll need to separate these teams into groups. And so this is what that'll look like. Now, before we get into the different levels of leadership in this structure, let's talk about the ultimate goal for all of these teams. And here it is. The ultimate goal for any ministry team is to help people pursue God. Let's not forget that as you go through your leadership training. No matter what level of leadership you're at on your team, the greatest thing you can do is to help someone else pursue God. And this goes for all of our teams, our shepherding team with our small group leaders and our worship team, our youth team, our welcome team, our clean team, our media team, all kinds of teams, you name it, whatever team it is, the ultimate goal for every team is to help people pursue God. Okay, so now with that in mind, let's talk about the three levels of team leadership. Now, the first and most basic leader for any team is called a discipler. Now, that might seem like a strange sounding word to you. But remember, the ultimate goal of our teams is to help people pursue God. So the most basic job of any leader at any level is to make disciples. So disciplers are the basic building blocks for any team. Leadership starts here. Let's look at the two roles of a discipler. First of all, as we've said, it's to help people pursue God. And this can be anyone. This can be someone in the group, on the team. It might be just someone in the church at large. That's the first and most important goal of any leader on any team. And then the second goal is to play a team-specific role. So the team-specific role of a drummer is to play the drums. Or the team-specific role of a small group leader is to lead his small group. Or maybe someone on the clean team cleans toilets or mops floors or whatever. That's the team-specific role. So this is the first level of leadership. It's called a discipler. And Leadership Training 101 will qualify you for that. Now here's the second level of leadership. It's just simply a group leader. And a group leader is someone who helps disciplers pursue God. So a group leader's focus, at least as far as the team is concerned, is to help the disciplers. It's to help those people in his or her group to disciple other people in the group or in the church. And that's the first job of any group leader. And then, of course, the second job is to play a team-specific role. So maybe the group leader might be a worship leader for one of the groups at the church, or maybe the group leader is a small group leader, you know, whatever. And here's the third level of leadership. It's just simply called a team leader. Now, if you're following along, you know that a team leader's ultimate job is to help group leaders to pursue God. So just as a group leader provides pastoral care and support for disciplers, a team leader provides that kind of support for the group leaders. And of course, a team leader also has some team-specific roles to play as well. So anyway, there it is. It's pretty simple. And this leadership structure is just meant to keep everyone on the same page across the board. It clears up confusion. And it provides simple pathways for leadership development within any team. Now again, you're going to learn more about what this looks like for your particular ministry team later. But remember this. No matter how far you go in leadership, you'll never graduate from helping people pursue God. You'll always be a discipler. And that's really what this leadership training is all about. So before we even get to the nuts and bolts of your particular ministry, we're going to show you how to make disciples. So here's the roadmap for Leadership Training 101. The first couple of weeks will introduce you to our philosophy of ministry. We're going to learn in week one that we can change the world. And in week two, we're going to learn about how the church fits into this. Now, the next three weeks of training will bring you through foundations, which is the basic discipleship curriculum that we use to help people pursue God. And then the last week, or sometimes it's more than one week, depending on your team, we'll get to the specifics of your team. You know, team goals and expectations and scheduling and things like that. So that's a basic outline of Leadership Training 101. And let's finish with this. How does this actually work? Well, here it is. See, every week has a playlist of short videos, and you're going to want to watch those videos on your own. And then at the end of that week, you want to connect with your trainer. Now, this will be a discipler or a group leader assigned to you. And talk about those videos. This will be a great opportunity for you to learn how discipleship works. And then at the end of those weeks, you'll be ready to join the team. Now, this may vary. In some cases, you'll already be on a team or in a group. But in other cases, your trainer may recommend something else for you. But that's basically it. Now you're ready to start Leadership Training 101. So here are some next steps to talk about with your trainer as you get started. 